And uh, good uh, Friday afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Valley News Live at 4 o'clock. There's a beautiful look from our Corwin Auto Tower. Okay, I'm seeing a few clouds off on the horizon, but really, by and large, things quiet for us for now in the metro. But we can see some of those rain clouds there on the horizon, and that's all part of a low pressure system that's still hanging around here. And of course, bringing that chance of some rain and storms continued in the forecast here for this evening. So here's those uh, temperatures as we speak. Hector International Airport, 74 degrees. The air pressure is holding steady, 29.84 inches of mercury. I do expect that air pressure to rise, of course, here tonight and through the weekend as high pressure makes its way in. But look at that north wind in Fargo, around 17 miles per hour. So that's a sign of us being on the back end of this low pressure system, seeing that continued north wind. Most of us seeing 70s across the board there this hour. 67 in Bemidji, also 68 in Fergus Falls, some, some of the cooler spots. But where things have stayed mainly dry this afternoon, 80 in Thief River Falls, 81 Grand Forks, a couple hot spots there at this point. So there's that low pressure system. Again, we've got the north wind here um, uh, pushing across our region. So that shows that, yes, this low pressure system is to our east. We've got those north winds, but you see just really uh, highly scattered showers and storms occurring here across the region. A close look in here to the Southern Valley, seeing a little storm there outside Page, one outside Hillsboro, another a little downpour there occurring near Enderlin, south of Valley City, another little downpour, and uh, just south of Fargo, seeing one there uh, as well. But up toward Beltrami County, we're seeing another little organized cluster of some rain and some lightning there occurring. Again, heavy downpour is the main concerns here uh, from these storms here this evening, and you can see just some moderate rainfall from Bemidji down into Lakes Country. Detroit Lakes got some showers in your vicinity there this evening as well. But again, th this is just going to be some scattered stuff that we're seeing all afternoon long and into the evening, mainly south and east of Fargo here around, uh, say, the 7 o'clock hour. Notice we'll stop this at 7.30 a.m. Just some lingering rain, a few rumbles of thunder still can't be ruled out as those bands from this low pressure system do continue to hold on. So for Friday night football games, some areas may see a passing heavy downpour, but most areas should stay quiet for this evening. Best chances of seeing that, say, Friday night football rain is going to be Fargo up toward the Detroit Lakes, Faustin areas toward Beltrami County, and then down toward Hankinson and in towards Sisseton also. Best chance of seeing those heavier downpours there around football time tonight. By sunset, though, I expect things to be quieting down, those showers and storms to fizzle out. Clearing skies take hold overnight, but especially in areas that have seen some rainfall today where the humidity is a bit higher. Look at this, that black you see there, that's fog that we're picking up on the hour by hour. So some of this fog tomorrow morning could be dense, so keep that in mind for your morning commute or your morning travels tomorrow. 50s north, 60s south with those foggy conditions. That fog lifts tomorrow mid-morning. We see 70s by lunchtime, and we're seeing plenty of sunshine in store for our Saturday. Again, high pressure is in charge there by Saturday afternoon. 70s, maybe some 80s for those temperatures Saturday around dinner time, and we stay nice and quiet Saturday night as well. It's again great news for those folks with any plans for the first half of the weekend. So here's how things look in Fargo tomorrow, starting off low 60s. Again, watch out for some patchy, dense fog tomorrow morning. That lifts mid-morning, looking at upper 70s for those highs. Uh, plenty of sunshine, north wind about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hometown forecast shows widespread 70s with plenty of sunshine across the region tomorrow afternoon. Beautiful photo of the day from Frazee, Minnesota. The morning commute. Boy, I wish my morning commute was like this every morning. Just a fantastic shot. Thanks for uploading that to our website, Lori. Uh, uh, ValleyNewsLive.com. So there's the weekend. Stacy, nice and quiet. We're either side of 80 for next week. A few spotty storm chances, but mainly dry next week also. That was a good looking commute. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> right, thanks, Nathan. Yeah. Well, the valley isn't the only place that saw some storms this week. About an hour north of the cities, many people are cleaning up from flash floods, hail, and strong winds. Here's what it looked like when Main Street in Cambridge turned into a river. Crews across the city are still assessing the damage. Reporter Alan Henry shows us the cleanup efforts so far and what still needs to be done. The sound of chainsaws filled neighborhoods across Cambridge today after storms last night caused damage that will take days to clean up. Right now we're just working on cleanup and damage assessment. So we still have several crews throughout the city and we're just trying to get a full understanding of the problem and figure out what we can do to fix it. City Administrator Evan Vogel says the main issue was just how much rain was dumped during the two hour storm. And we experienced about five inches of rain over that period of time, which uh, overwhelmed the storm systems and led to some pretty severe flooding. It wasn't just flash flooding that was a concern last night. Strong winds brought down some big branches in several neighborhoods, which city crews started the process of cleaning up today. 
So we're just trying to also clean out those drains because I know we're expected for more rain here. So trying to get all the loose branches that kind of fell to clog up the drains to kind of clear them out a little more so we can get water to flow down there. In some cases, entire trees came down like this one, which landed on Meg Schwanke's home. I had looked out the window, I went and sat down and I heard a thud and I thought it was thunder. Uh, it was not thunder. As the cleanup efforts continue, residents are still stunned by how quickly the damage was caused. The winds definitely were violent. I, mean, I have staff who have been on, on for 32 years with the city. They said they've never seen anything like this. In Cambridge, Alan Henry, WCCO 4 News.